Thank you very much. And I don't know how long it's been. Uh, maybe Virgil knows. Maybe, uh, it's been like seven, eight years when we decided uh, that we wanted to start distributing this into the uh, Caribbean islands and parts of South America. And that's when we hooked up with Harris, Harris Paints. So again, I manufacture it. We ship it all here. And then Harris takes it from there and they, uh, they go out to the market with these materials. We only do floors, we don't do walls, um, and, but we do every type of floor you can think of, from trowel downs to uh, 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 roll down systems, uh, to broadcast systems, but nothing we do is sprayed, okay? They're all basically epoxies, polyurethane concretes, uh, polyureas, and MMAs, which uh, stands for methyl methacyl rate. Um, and those are really super fast cure type acrylics. There's so many different types of flooring systems, but you know, we cannot demonstrate every single one of them. So what we've done uh, for today is we're gonna uh, sort of demonstrate the two extremes. We're gonna do one heavy duty trowel down, kind of a not a very good looking type of floor. And then the second, we're gonna go to the other extreme, uh, which is called Flotalix. Uh, the first one we're going to do is called a polyurethane concrete. Um, in, in our line, it's called Flow Fresh. Now, there's many different types of Flow Fresh. Uh, there's thick trowel down systems that go down in one coat, and that's what we're going to do today. And uh, then there's other systems where you can uh, uh, hand uh, squeegee it out and broadcast into it. Can, is everybody, I can't even hear myself. Is everybody still all right with me? On the speakers? Okay. Um, and then there's broadcast systems. Now you can take a polyurethane concrete, even though I said it wasn't meant to be decorative, and you can make it decorative. We could broadcast flakes or quartz or anything into it. Uh, but just for the purpose of this visit, we're just going to show you how it's, how it's mixed and how it's made. We're not going to broadcast it, uh, into it. So we'll, we'll trial it out for you and you see how it kind of levels out and uh, what tools are kind of needed to do that. So I guess let's go ahead and, uh, oh, uh, the last thing is, this would be going normally over just bare concrete. Okay, we, we happen to go ahead and coat this board with an epoxy and broadcast it sand into it, but that's not a normal situation. Normally you don't have to do that. We just did it because we're doing it on a board and we're uh, not doing it over bare concrete. So that's why that looks like that right now. So what we're doing is prep the concrete, trowel the system down, and back roll it and it's a finished floor and it, it's going to be one quarter inch thick and uh and that that's it so let's go ahead and uh let's go ahead and uh, mix up the kit uh, the kits are a part a and a part b polyurethane then there gets a color pack now we happen to have uh, i think eight different colors um, that are just pretty basic colors. They, they do come in other colors, but we had to sort of limit ourselves um, so we're not going off the charts here with a million different colors. But for the most part, the eight different colors are, are well received. They're, they're any, anywhere from a dark gray to sort of a light cream. I think today, what are we doing, a tan? Khaki. Oh, khaki, this one's called khaki. Um, this one seems to be a pretty big seller. Uh, most of these types of floors, again, are done in heavy-duty manufacturing, mostly food and beverage. The product itself has an antimicrobial agent mixed in with the product. It's, uh, it's called Polygene. It's a silver ion-based antimicrobial. It's not a pesticide. It's mixed throughout the entire system, and therefore, uh, if the floor down the road gets damaged or gets a uh, scratch in it, even down in that scratch, which is very important in the food and beverage uh, industry, it, that antimicrobial will continue to work throughout the life of the floor, even if the floor is damaged. Um, that's one big difference between Flowcrete and some other manufacturers of these types of products, is most of their products, the, the uh, antimicrobial, if they even have one, is usually just in the top coat. Ours is mixed out throughout the entire system. So it's a, it's a great, great thing that Flowcrete does that others do not. Okay, so what he's doing right now is he's actually 
Uh, he's put. Did you put the whole kit in there? No. Oh, you're only doing a half. They're mixing a half a kit because of the size of the uh, the board here. But uh, what he's done is he's put the part A, the part B, the polyurethane, and then he's dumped the color pack in there. He's given it a little bit of a stir, kind of uh, infuses that color a little bit. And now he's dumping in the filler, which is basically uh, a white cement, antimicrobial, different sizes of aggregates. It's all sort of fine tuned to, to meet the needs of uh, this type of industry. So uh, it's just not a bag of cement. It's a lot more to it than that. So what he's going to do is stir this thing up for, oh, about 45 seconds until he doesn't see any more lumps in it or anything. And then we're going to trowel it out. We're going to back roll it. And then you can all take a look at it and see what it is. This stuff is incredible when it comes to uh, sticking to concrete. Um, if you did this on concrete, and then tried to take a hammer and a chisel to try and bust it off the concrete, it would actually break the concrete away uh, instead of uh, separating from the concrete. The PSI on this per square inch is 8,000 PSI, whereas concrete is usually all 3,600 at the, at the high end. Um, so at a quarter inch thick, this stuff is actually stronger than your concrete is at four or six or eight inches thick as far as PSI goes. Another good thing about this product here is it's, uh, it, it, there's no, uh, in, in the flooring industry, there's usually a lot of questions and problems about um, hydrostatic pressure, vapor drive, moisture coming up from the concrete, and that's why you might hear some problems somewhere with epoxies and things like that uh, against moisture problems. Uh, they're getting bubbles, they're not sticking. Uh, many different problems that you gotta be very careful at uh, about in this industry. This particular product um, is unlimited moisture protection. So it could be brand new concrete, two, three days old. It could be concrete with a moisture problem already existing and uh, there's no, no issues with it. As far as I know, anywhere in the world, we've never had a failure uh, due to moisture with this particular type of product. All right, so basically what he's done is he's mixed, mixed up this polyurethane cement. And what he's gonna do is he's using a notch trowel to kind of gauge it. If we were doing a, a, a much bigger job, we would use either a screed rake or a uh, what we call a screed box uh, because obviously this is going to be a lot of work to try and do this by hand if you were doing a, a facility such as the size of this entire room here so we use different size screed rakes different size uh, uh, screed boxes and of course big crews and they uh, and they they can uh, gauge the material at the proper proper thickness <clears throat> so uh, once again, this is not going to be the most beautiful thing you've ever seen, uh, but it's meant for heavy duty manufacturing and it's meant for function, not aesthetics. So he'll go ahead and uh, finish trowing this out and then uh, what are you guys going to back roll that with? Oh, okay, I saw the porcupine roller over there. Um, sometimes there's some, uh, in some of these systems, uh, we use a porcupine roller. It's just a roller, it's not, doesn't have fuzz on it. It has millions of little needles. And that's with some of the more looser systems. Um, and it's just to pop any air bubbles or anything like that. But uh, for this demonstration, yeah, there, there's the porcupine roller right there. So if we were doing a system that was a lot more fluid and less uh, fillers, less rocks in it, we would run the porcupine roller over the top of it to, to you know, get any entrapped air out. The thicker systems, you usually don't have to worry about that too much because they're, they're so full of fillers and everything. So, okay, he's already trowled out. So again, your floor is approximately, if that's a quarter inch trowel, it's approximately laid out at a quarter inch. So now all he's got to do is try and make it look a little bit better. So he's just going to run the roller over it back and forth a few different times. You're still gonna see some of the rocks and some of the things uh, sticking up in it a little bit. It will level out a little bit, but once again, this is made to, uh, you know, you put this down in a, in a food plant or a manufacturing plant, 
Uh, it may not be the most beautiful thing when it's finished, but it's going to last probably 20 or 30 years. I've got jobs all over the world. Some of them have been down for pushing on 40 years now. These products were invented in the UK a long time ago, and I think we did a Mars candy shop somewhere in the UK, and it was done in the late 60s or mid 70s, and to, that, to this day, that floor is still in place. Now, I think 20 years later, they went in and sanded it down and did a refresher coat but not the whole trial down system, just, a, just a, uh, another top coat. But <laughs> so basically here we have it, a quarter inch uh, polyurethane concrete topping. Um, another good thing about this is it's thermal shock resistant. Um, it's based on concrete technology. And let me explain thermal shock real quick to you. Um, Thermal shock is uh, when, when a building goes from hot to cold, hot to cold, the concrete, or the whole building actually, but the concrete's gonna expand a little and contract a little, okay? Um, if, and, and, and a concrete expands and contracts at a certain rate. Well, an epoxy expands and contracts at a different rate. So there's always this chance that they're gonna, over time they're gonna try and pull themselves apart from each other. The technology behind the uh, FlowFresh is that it expands and contracts at the same rate as the concrete below it. So it never really pulls it, itself apart. You can go from a, uh, putting this inside of a freezer to hitting it with a hot water pressure washer and nothing will happen to it. So very durable, uh, probably one of the biggest selling lines in uh, Flowcrete, one of the first products we ever did. And to this day is probably the biggest selling product in the world right now. Very functional. And you know, like I said, you can make it decorative if you want to, okay? So what we're gonna do, I guess, is let's set that aside. Yeah, I guess let's move it out of the way. <coughs> and then we're gonna do what we call flotalics. Yeah, go ahead. Oh well, yeah, let me ask, is there any questions on, on anything here first before you? The concrete's cracked. Yes. Okay, so uh, he, his question is, uh, the concrete has a crack, we put it over it, is it going to hide it? Yes. Is it going to crack again? I don't know. The problem is, the problem is not with the product, the problem is with the concrete. So you can address that crack, if it was a movement crack, okay, originally, and the building settled and it cracked and it's not moving anymore, then you're okay. You're probably never going to see that crack again. If that building is constantly moving and it moves enough, then yeah, it will crack through my floor too. So the, anytime you have a crack, you need to address that issue. It can be routed out. I don't know, it depends on how severe the problem is. Sometimes concrete settles, there's a void underneath it. You have to do pump jacking underneath, but you know, just because we coat it with my product doesn't mean it's gonna hold the, the concrete together for the rest of its life. It's stronger than the concrete, but eventually it might give. So that's just a, that's a really a concern for the installer to address those issues up front. Quick question, okay. Um, can you use this product to do like a full skirting or? Great question. He wants to know if we can go up the wall. And a lot of plants, they do call for a cove base, usually four to six inches up the wall. We have another product that's the exact same thing, but it's a thicker version that'll hang vertically. It's called FlowFresh CM for Cove Mortar. So yes, you see that a lot. They do the curbs or they go up the wall and the, the guys hand trowel it up the wall, just like you see base in, in epoxies and other things. And then they let that dry, they saw cut, and then they tie the floor back into the, flo uh, tie the, floor back into the base. So yes, the answer is it can go up the wall with a different version. Okay. Yeah, that's another great question. It doesn't all, it was meant to go over concrete, but it really it can go over anything with the proper preparation. She wants to know if it can go over tile. Yes, we've done many times a job just like this. Same thing though, you gotta come in, diamond grind the tile or shot blast or scare fight or something, and this can go right over the top of the tile. You'll never even know there was tile underneath it. The, the only issue with that is you gotta make sure that your original tile is stuck to the floor. 
I see a popping tile right here. So if that tile pops off the floor later, okay, then it's gonna take my floor with it, obviously, because I'm only stuck to the tile, not to the concrete. Great question, but the contractor, again, they, they're the ones who have to sound check the floor, make sure all the tiles are in place. If there's any loose ones, they can remove it, patch it in, and then still go over it. But yes, that can be done. Okay, any more questions on polyurethane concrete before we move to the fancy stuff? Okay. Oh, you got a question? If you're like grease on the floor, would it still bond? Okay, yes. All right, he wants to know if there's grease on the concrete, will it still bond? Again, this goes back to preparation. Yes, it'll still bond, but you got to get rid of the, at least, I mean, we don't know about how deep the grease is saturated, but this is one of the one of the greatest products in the world for sticking to concrete, even if it's not perfect concrete. So as long as we get the topical grease off, I would if it was a greasy floor, I would prep you know prep it with a hot water pressure washer, degreaser, um, you know clean it up the best I could, scarify it, shot blast, do all the proper preparation, and you should be able to to, to go over the top of it. Yes, of the same stuff? Yes. Okay, yes, there is another version that's, uh, you can see a sample on the desk over there later, but there is a, 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 um, a sample of some that will just self-level completely, you won't see any of these rocks or anything, okay? You lose a little bit of impact resistance, you, you lose a little bit of, of uh, heat resistance, you, you lose a little bit of some of the things that the fillers help to do, but yes, I mean, in a bakery, I would do that type of floor. In a meat factory, I'd go back to this kind of floor. So it depends on the environment, but yes, we do have totally smooth floors like this, absolutely. Okay, all right, we're gonna move on to the, what we call flotalics. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, okay, I understand. He wants to know if he could stamp some kind of design in it during its curing process. My guess is maybe. <laughs> You'd be the first to try it. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I've never, I've never been asked that question. Um, I don't know. It'd be interesting to find that one out, but I just, I just don't know. I just don't know. I mean, it's similar to concrete, so if you could do it to concrete, my assumption would be that you could probably do it to this too. Um, but I just don't know. Okay? Yes, oh, absolutely, yeah, no problem. The, 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 in fact, the, the more porous, the better. Uh, as long as, again, as long as it's prepped right. You know, porous to me means it may have a loose cap of concrete, so I would definitely want to uh, either scarify it or shot blast it, 100% for sure. Preparation, very important. But yeah, this stuff will stick to rusted metal, to be honest with you. Um, but we, we don't like to, you know, we don't like to just take advantage of that. We, we like to prep good. Oh, did they fall? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. All right. So we made it through the messy one. I didn't get anything on my shoes. So now let's go do the, uh, the fancy looking floor. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's a great question. In this, in this temperature, he wants to know how long it would take to set. Well, it, it goes by heat. So the hotter it is, the faster it cures. That's probably going to be um, starting to dry in about 15 to 20 minutes, but it, it would be walkable, I think, in about four to five hours. If it's in a cold environment inside of a building, you could be eight to 12 hours before. And then I would ask for 24 before I really started hitting it with hot water or anything. So. You can if you want to, oh, sure, okay. yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why that would be necessary, though. Um, if you have a place that's uh, um, no, already the have a um, seal over it, it bonds on, 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 on paint? No, 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 no. No, I would, re if there's any paint or seal or anything on the concrete and you want to put this floor in, you want to shot blast it and remove all that. Get rid of it. We want to go back down to 
bare concrete anytime you can or, or clean shot blasted tile. Yeah, I don't want any paints or anything underneath it because your paint's gonna peel up. And so this stuff will stick to it, but it's not gonna work in the long run. Um, okay, so this, uh, this product we're gonna do now, and you can go ahead and start measuring it out and, and getting ready. So what we're gonna do here is this is an epoxy it's called Flotalix, and the reason it's called Flotalix is only because it's got a special pigment in it. Let me explain to you real quick. Normally, you mix an epoxy, and then you pour in a liquid color pack, and you stir it, and then the epoxy itself becomes the color of the color pack. In this situation, we're going to dump a color pack in it, but it's not a liquid, it's a powder color pack. And even though we stir it in with a drill, it never really changes the color of the epoxy. The epoxy is still clear. We've just infused it all in. In other words, it's sort of like mixing oil and water or vinegar and oil. You can see they separate. You can mix them all together, but they're really not fused together. The same concept goes with this stuff. The color is mixed throughout the system, but it doesn't change the fact that the epoxy is still clear. So as we spread it out, move it around and make designs with it, what we're doing is we're actually moving around the color, and, but the epoxy, the clear epoxy is still top and the, and the color is floating to the bottom. It's, it's a very neat concept. It's, it's very hard to understand though, but it just never really fuses in. It doesn't change the color. The, the color is just in there and it floats to the bottom. And then as they back roll it, it'll be a clear coat over this pigmented color, even though it's mixed together. I hope that's not too hard to understand. But I don't know, they invented this stuff years and years ago, and it's actually become one of the most popular floors uh, in the country right now. So what he's gonna do, he's mixing it up a 100% solids epoxy, okay? And uh, then he's gonna dump in this color how do you know how much you're dumping in? Okay, okay. So they're mixing up 100% solids epoxy. Now, epoxies are really not UV stable for the most part. Now, well, I said UV resistant. We do have some epoxies that are more UV sta stable than other epoxies. Um, but for the most part, if I was going to be doing this type of floor with an epoxy, I would do it indoors where the sun's not really hitting it now if i wanted this system outside um, then you can do it we just have to go to a polyurea and the same the same uh, method would be used but we dumped the pigment into a polyurea rather than an epoxy that is 100 percent uv stable so then i could do it outside um, we don't promote that a lot because it's a lot more expensive to do a polyurea than it is to do an epoxy um, so, um, but, but that version does exist. So if that, if the, if it's needed to go outside, we can do it. No problem. <clears throat> okay. This stuff, we have about eight different colors. I think I got the eight samples of the different, well, I may not have them all, but if you get a chance later, you can look on the table. You see the different colors. Now what we're going to do, this, this type of floor, oh, let me, let me explain the black at first. If you understand what I was just telling you about the color not mixing in with the epoxy, that means that the pigment is only as good as how you move it around. It's gonna fall wherever it falls. It's not changing the color of the epoxy. So if I was to do this on a, on a clear floor with stains in it or something like that, or imperfections, and then just try and do it over that without a black primer, then you would see that telegraphing through that color. That's why we always paint the floor black first, and that way, uh, there's no imperfections as far as different shades of, of concrete and things like that. 
And so it, no matter if there's more pigment on one side and less on the other, you won't be able to tell because of the black base. That's why the floor is painted black right now. And of course they did that yesterday so we could be ready for this demonstration today. But even on a job site, it would be the same thing. You'd paint the whole floor black one day after you do your patching and uh, cracks and all that. And then the next day you come back and then you would put the flotalics and then you're done. Now there is an option to put additional coats of clear polyurethane or whatever you want over the top of it. Just depends on the project, the job, and, and, and uh, what you're after as a final result. But for the most part, you got your black primer, you got your flow tax, and then you're finished. So if you can uh, see where he's pouring it out, you can see that the color really didn't mix in and turn it. If we would have used just a, let, let's say, a copper colored gray paint type pigment, it would have all been the exact same color. Okay, but the color never mixed in with it. It's just floating all around in there. So that's why it looks the way it does. Now what he's going to do is it almost becomes sort of artwork. His, his job right now is to spread it out evenly, okay, throughout the whole, the whole uh, board here. But then he can play around with it. He can become an artist for a few minutes. He can, if he doesn't like the way it looks, he can slide the roller around and make different designs in it. The only thing he's got to do is, is once he's done with messing around with it and getting all these wild looking designs, then he needs to back roll it one time, nice and smooth, to, to get rid of all the, uh, the, the waves in it and everything. But it will self-level, and it looks a little funny now, but just give it a couple minutes, and uh, you'll see what this stuff does. It's very neat. So he's put all these designs in it now, that's enough, I think, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit more. Okay. Uh, usually it goes down, it's hard to gauge it on a board, but normally when you're doing a big job, you have what we call a notch squeegee, and there's like 20 mil and 30 mil notch squeegees, and uh, um, this particular system is supposed to be 30 mils thick um, from start to finish, or about 28 mils or so. So the primer would go down at eight mils, the top coat would go down at, uh, you know, we'd probably use a 20 mil notch squeegee. You're not gonna be exactly at 20 mils, but you just try and shoot for a certain thickness. Now there are other ways to make, the, uh, a lot of uh, flooring companies like this product because they all come up with different ideas. Um, one company may walk out onto the floor with spikes and spray alcohol all over it and it gives it this looks like craters on the moon effect. Another guy may walk out there and hit it with fire and it just spreads it all and makes all these weird designs. Some guys take a broom and just push it around and, and then they back roll it. I mean, this is almost like a floor that, that's sort of artwork. And so uh, all these different flooring contractors that install this, they all think that they have the greatest way to do it. I mean, there is no greatest way to do it. You, anything you do, as long as you back roll it when you're finished, is going to look cool. You see how he's dripping all these things? All those things are going to be like moon craters. Maybe the customer, that's what they want. Once he back rolls it, they'll just fade in and it's going to just be, it's going to be basically a piece of artwork when it's done. But it'll be smooth and clear. It'll be a, 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 a chemical resistant epoxy just like everything else. It'll just have a very unique look. So you can start to see it taking on these uh, strange effects. If he doesn't like it, he could smear it around and just do it over. You've got plenty of time to work with it. You know, look, see, he said, I don't like that design. So I'm gonna go in and smear it around, do something else. And then he'll back roll it. And eventually, he'll come up with something he likes. And that'll be your finished product. Oh, Michael, do you have anything to say about this stuff? Is this a big seller here? I mean, it is in the US. Yeah, we've, we've, done, we've done a couple restaurants. Oh, tell them about your office. The Harris office. Yeah, gotta hold yeah, it close. Everyone is invited to the Harris Corporate Office in Willoughby. We've done about 
thousand square feet on this floor, uh, using multiple colors. Okay, we got to back roll that now. Just one time across, back and forth. And then let it dry. Okay, does anybody have any questions while he's finished back rolling this? Anything that strikes you funny or? Okay, <laughs> again, yeah, we can go over tile, but you would have to, you know the black coat that was underneath it? You would have to probably put that black coat on um, in multiple coats or very thick because we have to end up with a smooth floor to hide all these tile. The other one wasn't a problem because it's so thick, it hides everything. But this one is not thick enough to hide all your lines and everything. So you prime it in black, maybe 20, 30, 40 mils thick to, to, to where it turns all into a uh, black sheet. And then yes, then you can go over it just like this. What would you use as the black primer? Uh, just a, the, the same epoxy, 100% solids epoxy you just saw, but now we use just a regular black pigment, a liquid black pigment. But it's the same product. What you use for cleaning? What do I use to what? For cleaning, after you use Okay, it's just an epoxy floor. He wants to know how do you clean it. You clean it like you would any other epoxy floor. So, I mean, you could just sweep it, mop it. Depends on how bad your traffic is in, uh, in, in the environment. Um, if it's a pretty tough environment, maybe you have one of those walk behind scrubbers, but it, it can be cleaned any way, any way you would clean a normal tile floor. Oh, the mixing products? Oh, yeah, well, you're probably not going to be able to save the buckets you mix in. But yeah, the, 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 the paint mixture, okay, that's a good question. The paint uh, rollers that you've seen, once, that, once you can't clean them and you can't, you got to throw them away. It's got to be thrown away after this. I mean, epoxies are different than paints. Uh, I, I, when, uh, when the gentleman over here was talking earlier, he was talking about the cleaning things and all that for those rollers, that spinning thing, which I thought was cool. But that wouldn't work with these things because it, it's, uh, it's an epoxy. I mean, you just can't, you can't really clean it. Um, so yeah, use, use cheaper rollers when you can get away with it uh, that you know you're gonna throw away, paint brushes and things like that. And as far as cleaning the tools off, just you know, uh, xylene or, or any kind of a good solvent would, would work for that. How, how resistant would be this kind of finish to scratching? For instance, in a high traffic area okay. with ladies with high heels and that sort of right. thing. Right. Okay, it's not, it's, not the, uh, it's not the most scratch resistant floor in the world, okay, for sure. Now, we've done a lot of grocery stores and things like that where they knew that going into it. So they said, well, let's do it. And then let's put a clear coat of what we call a high traffic system urethane that's loaded with aluminum oxide, okay? So it, it takes away from the high gloss and it goes more to a satin finish, but I've got some pictures of some great jobs we've done just for that reason. And it is beautiful if you ask me, but yes, you can put a high traffic system clear coat over the top of it if that's a concern. Is it a non-slip system or can you add something to make it non-slip? Oh, another good question. Yeah, no, it's not considered a non-slip, although it's not any more slippery than a tile floor just because it looks more slippery but it's not any less either. Yes, you can sprinkle, well, if you do what I just said with the clear, with that clear urethane high traffic system, then it automatically becomes, because it's got a very light aluminum oxide that would help it be non-slip, but you could also sprinkle um, like a, just grit, aluminum oxide or things like that, and it, you're gonna take away from it a little bit, but if safety's a concern, yes, it's, it's still an epoxy, you can still broadcast whatever you want into it, so um, yeah, in and of itself, no. Uh, pot life of the epoxy is about 15 to 20 minutes, you know, in an environment like this where it's kind of warm. Uh, those are, gen they generate their own heat. So again, you know, once you do it though, you're gonna wanna pour it all, you don't wanna leave it in the bucket. It's not like a paint where you can just keep dipping your roller in there. And you, you should pour it on the floor spread it out with a squeegee, and then start messing around with that roller. As you pour it out on the floor, it cools it down, and then you've got plenty of time to work with it, 20, 30 minutes easily.